untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we are revisiting an old favorite of mine, which is Antique Affinity, a mono-blue artifact combo deck built around the Antiquities War, a 4-mana enchantment saga that on the first two chapters lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, we can reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into our hand, and then on the third and final chapter, artifacts we control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness 5-5 five five until end of turn, so that will often and end the game on the spot. The goal of the deck is to find some ramp artifacts and hopefully play Antiquities War on turn 3, and then by turn 5, as we reach the third chapter, we can hopefully win the game. Then another important new addition from a historic jumpstart is Thought Monitor. The 7 mana artifact creature construct has affinity for artifacts, so it costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control. So if we control 6 or more artifacts, we can potentially cast it for just a single blue mana. And then it's a 2 2 flyer that when it enters a battlefield, it draws 2 cards. So incredibly synergistic in our deck. Then we've got the legendary package of Emery, Psy, and Mox Amber. Mox Amber, a zero mana legendary artifact that taps to add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. Just being a zero mana artifact is already quite valuable in our deck, where we want to have a lot of artifacts in play for antiquities and to make our thought monitor cheaper, etc. But uh, Mox Amber can often make mana if we control one of our legendary creatures, so it has great synergy in our deck, allowing us to ramp out our hand. And then Emery is essentially a creature that has affinity for artifacts, so we can also potentially cast it for just a single blue mana, and then a 1-2 that when it enters a battlefield mills 4 cards, and we can tap Emery and choose target artifact card in our graveyard that we can cast this turn. So we can cast Emery as early as turn 1, thanks to our 0 mana artifacts in the deck, and then can start providing card advantage out of our graveyard. We have a lot of artifacts that sacrifice themselves to draw cards, so Emery can get those back from the graveyard to provide even more card advantage. And then we've got a full playset of Psy Master Thopterist, which has great synergy with the Antiquities War. The 3 mana 1 4 legendary human artificer says whenever we cast an artifact spell, create a 1 1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. So Psy can generate an army of 1 1 tokens that will eventually turn into 5 5s on the third chapter of the Antiquities War. And then Psy, of course, enables Mox Amber. If we have an opening hand with Psy in it, we often want to hold our zero mana artifacts in hand until after we play Psy, so we can generate a whole bunch of Thopters at once. And then for one and a blue, we can also sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card, so that can be useful ability in response to removal spells, and can also be combined with Emery to potentially sacrifice our Thought Monitor, and then we can replay Thought Monitor from the graveyard with Emery's ability, so that can draw us a lot of cards to help find the Antiquities War. Then we've got a little bit of interaction with our two copies of Metallic Rebuke, a 3 mana counter spell that counters target spell unless its controller pays 3 generic mana, but it also has Improvise, so we can tap untapped artifacts we control to help pay for the generic mana cost, so we can often cast it for just a single blue mana. Then, taking a look at the rest of our deck, we do need a high density of artifacts for the deck to function, and ideally we've got some ramp as well to get the Antiquities War in place sooner. So we've got two copies of Cold Steel Heart, comes into play tapped, naming blue, and then we've got our full playset of Mindstone, which can also help us ramp and can be sacrificed to draw a card, so it combines nicely with Emery as we can get it back to draw even more cards. And then at zero mana, besides our full playset of Mox Amber, we also have the full playset of Ornithopter, just to give us another cheap artifact to help with affinity, can help us play turn one Emery, and can be played after Psy to generate additional Thopters, which also helps for the affinity for Thought Monitor. And then at one mana, We've got Aether Spellbomb, a very important card as well, it gives us creature interaction. The one mana artifact can be sacrificed for a blue mana to return target creature to its owner's hand. So this plus Emery gives us a way to bounce one creature every turn essentially, which is great at stalling out the game against creature decks, but we can also sacrifice it to simply draw a card. Although for the most part we're happy to keep Spellbomb in play for a while to enable our various artifact synergies. Then we've got two copies of Chromatic Sphere as well. One mana artifact can be sacrificed to add one mana of any color and draw a card. So just a one mana cantrip that can enable our various affinity synergies early on. And the full playset of Soul Guide Lantern, another cantrip that can also provide a little bit of graveyard hate, which is relevant in certain matchups. 
And then going over the mana base, a very important card is also Treasure Vault. Being an artifact land means it counts towards the affinity for Emery and Thought Monitor, and will eventually turn into a 5-5 creature with Antiquities War to help us close out the game. So Treasure Vault is incredibly valuable, it's also an artifact we can find with the Antiquities War, so just cannot be underestimated how important it is. There's plenty of other colorless lands we could be playing, like Inventor's Fair to maybe gain a bit of life, there's the Buried Ruin to get artifacts back from our graveyard, could be playing Blink Moth Nexus, which I tried in the deck for a while, as something we can also activate in response to the third chapter of Antiquities War to get an additional 5-5 creature. So there's plenty of options, but at the end of the day we still need our blue mana to cast a lot of our spells, and in the late game especially, sometimes we want to cast multiple copies of Thought Monitor in the same turn, so we need access to multiple blue sources, so can't play too many of those colorless lands, and Treasure Vault is by far the most important one. So yeah, that's pretty much our deck. This is an artifact combo deck, so we're not playing cards like Steel Overseer and other artifact creatures. Nettle Cyst, for instance, could also be okay, but we're more focused on drawing cards and eventually winning the game with the Antiquities War. Could also consider splashing white for a few early removal spells, like Portable Hole, maybe Glass Casket. Those could be okay against creature-heavy builds, and would require us to adjust the mana base, making it a little bit less consistent overall. Wish we had the blue-white fast lands to uh, make that a little bit more feasible. And then technically we could also be playing Gigantha the Wellspring as our companion, which again would also require a few changes in the mana base, replace some basic islands with pathways that either make red or green, but I'm just not gonna bother with it. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, our hands not that exciting, don't have any of our legendary creatures, no antiquities, so take a mulligan. Alright, this is a little better. Probably bottom sigh and then hope to draw some more cheap artifacts. No real point in playing Ornithopter right now. Champion of the Perished. Alright, so I can play Emery here. And then hopefully mill over a zero mana artifacts, which we did. So next turn I can play Psy and Ornithopter out of the graveyard to make an extra Thopter right away. Opponent on mono blank zombies, it looks like. Gonna hit us for three. Or maybe draw a card instead. Alright. Second Ornithopter, not as exciting as Mox Amber would have been. But uh, we can hope to draw land next turn to play Antiquities. And then Sai making a few Thopters with Antiquities will eventually close out the game. Happy to chum block with Ornithopter as well if needed, as we can just get it back for free. Although I could also start getting back Mindstone to uh, start drawing cards instead. Ooh, Thought Monitor's nice. Can't quite play it. But Psy also helps with increasing our artifact count. So we get two artifacts, and now we can play a Thought Monitor. Alright, and uh, we'll start attacking with the Flyer here. Next turn, play Antiquities War, and then need to survive two more turns. Opponent's been stuck on lands as well. Hopefully they don't have a sweeper. Could be quite effective here as most of our artifacts are creatures. Death Baron giving plus one plus one and death touch is decent too. So I could jump with Thought Monitor to then replay it next turn. Let's see, I have two, three, four, five, six. I can play it for one mana, hopefully draw land and still play Antiquities War. Kind of like that idea. Alright, we drew the land, so this is good to go. Hoping to draw Mox Amber at some point as well. There we go. So let's do that first. And then I could maybe go Mindstone into Antiquities War.
and find another Thought Monitor, probably. Could also go for a Spell Bomb to give us a bit of interaction. Do the tokens want to attack? Sure, why not? Yeah, what I don't want to see is some sort of one-sided sweeper like Crippling Fear. But it doesn't look like it. Shambling Ghasts. Do they still want to attack him to my Thought Monitor? Opponent is just going to draw a few cards end of turn instead. They can make a zombie token with Crib Breaker as well. Alright, so... Now I would like to find some interaction, if possible. Probably take Treasure Vaults as Artifact Land for the turn. And then uh, kick things off with Thought Monitor. Can sacrifice Monitor with Sai and then replay it with Emery as well. Alright, I guess we'll play more Thought Monitors. Plenty of Treasure Vaults. So... Yeah, let's sacrifice a Thought Monitor, maybe after attacking with it. So these can all attack. Thought Monitor attacks. And then I can use Psy to sacrifice a Thought Monitor and let's say a Tapped Thopter. All right, drew another Thought Monitor, so can play that, replay one with Emery. Still didn't find a Spell Bomb, sadly. Another Mox Amber can make more mana, but we're out of card draw, so... Yeah, my last option is sacking Chromatic Sphere in the hopes of finding something useful. Another Antiquities doesn't do much for me. Alright, so don't have any interaction here. Even finding a Metallic Rebuke would have been nice. But, uh... So it goes. Just gotta hope they don't have any big plays next turn, and we get to just kill them with the third chapter. It's gonna be a lot of damage. Got uh, 12 Thopter tokens, two Ornithopters, four Thought Monitors, all turning into 5-5s. Five Gotta discard to hand size, even. All right, three cards in hand, five mana. And the Meat Hook Massacre for two. Oh no, Disaster Strikes. Okay, that's not what I wanted to see. So, opponent's gonna gain a million life now. Now they also lost their creatures, and they have Undead Augur triggers on the stack. But they're gonna gain life from Massacre first. Opponents at 19. If they attack us, they're dead to the Antiquities War still. Alright, I guess they uh, got a little bit too excited with the Meat Hook Massacre. And this is exactly the reason why I wanted to get as many non-creature artifacts in play as possible. In the event of a Sweeper. Well, was a pretty exciting ending here, but we got there nonetheless. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice looking hand. Facing a burn deck, it looks like, with Lurus. So, a turn one spell bomb. 
turn two can play Mind Stone, and then turn three can go Psy into Mox Amber, into another Spell Bomb, make a few Thopters right away. So, I like my early starts. Gotta hope they can kill Psy at instant speed in response to me casting the first zero mana artifact. Emery is nice, could play Emery for one mana here, but I think I still like Mindstone more, because if they kill Emery, Mox Amber doesn't make mana, won't be able to play Psy necessarily. And I think making the Thopters is what's gonna keep us alive. So we'll have to take a bit of damage here. Opponent has to cast the Lightning Helix before it goes away. So with only one mana, they won't be able to kill Psy. Which is good. But we are at 8, so if our opponent has more burn in hand, we're in trouble. For now, play Psy, play Mox Amber, and then I guess I could play Emery instead of Spellbomb. Could also sacrifice Spellbomb, technically. Alright, some artifacts in the graveyard we can replay. So, gotta hope our opponent draws more creatures as opposed to drawing more uh, burn spells, pretty much. So I could just block with Psy, I could double block, and then probably lose Psy, or I could just chum block with the Thopter, which is what I'm gonna do. They're probably killing Emery. Nope, still going upstairs. Okay, so I can play Antiquities, which is probably what I should do. This might end up being too slow. Take a treasure vault that I can play right now. Ornithopter. Make a token. Emery gets back Soul Guide Lantern. Can potentially shrink down the Lava Runner as well. And that's it. Please draw more creatures. Lumamancer's fine. Lava Runner attacks. I think I'm fine double blocking it even. If they use a removal spell on a Thopter, I'm very happy. Just don't want to put Sign Harm's way. Alright, Sliding Strike to the face, so we're at two. Could also draw Metallic Rebuke to give us a bit of interaction on the stack. Thought Monitor seems excellent. No Metallic Rebuke. So what's my best bet here? Could sacrifice Thought Monitor just to replay it. And keep digging. I guess that's okay. So we'll sacrifice a Thought Monitor. And maybe Ornithopter. Okay. Replay a Thought Monitor. And I hope to draw Metallic Rebuke. Right, no Rebuke. So, last-ditch effort, I could still sacrifice Lantern using Mindstone to um, draw into a Rebuke, and that's kind of my last chance of finding interaction to still save me. I could do that at instant speed, so I don't have to do it now. So, I guess I'll wait. But most likely our opponent's gonna burn us out. Lumancer attacks. At this point I don't care about Psy. And yeah, there's a lightning helix, so 
Last chance. Draw a card. Come on, Metallic Rebuke. Ah, close. Well, needed one more turn here. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Can play turn one Emery. That seems pretty good. So as long as I can kill Emery, we'll be able to get a ton of value from it. And can even play a lantern. Just have to exile my own island here. Alright, so five permanents in play on turn one. Opponent on a life gain deck. So probably a combo deck with uh, Heliot plus the Oak. And uh, Antiquities is certainly a good draw. So how about we play Mindstone? And pass it back. And then we can play a turn three Antiquities. Which is hopefully good enough. Alright, Daxo, so they might just be a mono-white life gain deck instead of green-white combo. So our opponent's going to be gaining some life, so we will need more than 20 damage to kill them with the Antiquities. But that shouldn't be too much of an issue. So play this, keeping blue mana untapped. And I sure like a Thought Monitor. Which I can play pretty cheaply next turn. Alright. Alright, opponent is green-white after all. Skyclave Apparition. Oh no, that can exile my Antiquities War. Good thing we have a Thought Monitor to find the backup copy. But that's unfortunate. And we'll take two. Alright, size not bad. So, can play Psy and then still play Cold Steel Heart for now. And then I guess I also want to sacrifice Chromatic Sphere so I have something to rebuy with Emery. Rebuke could also come in handy. So how about we keep up Metallic Rebuke instead? So play Psy. Get back Chromatic Sphere. And then a single island represents Metallic Rebuke. Can maybe counter a collected company. Trellisara I think is annoying enough that it's worth countering. Even though it's not a game-ending card necessarily. Now we can do some fun stuff with Thought Monitor, Psy and Emery. So these attack. I'll sacrifice Probably Thought Monitor and like a, an Ornithopter, maybe. And our opponent concedes, can replay Thought Monitor from the graveyard very cheaply, and sooner or later we'll find another Antiquities. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. I see a turn one Emery, so I'm gonna keep. Just gotta hope she doesn't get removed. And turn one mountain certainly represents a potential burn spell here. Now with that being said, it's not like I have a Psy in hand that I need to keep my zero mana artifacts in hand for. And I can still play Mindstone into hopefully turn three antiquities, so I don't think there's a huge cost in playing a turn one Emery. Uh, 
All right, milled triple Psy. No removal from our opponent, at least. But Emery doesn't have anything to rebuy from the graveyard. Light of the Knights. All right, so maybe a Chandra tribal deck here. Drew a third Mind Stone, so... We're good at drawing Mind Stone and Psy, apparently, but... Could use an extra land. The good news is, if we're upon displaying some sort of Planeswalker or Synergy deck, they're gonna have a hard time interacting with my artifacts and enchantments. So Mind Stone into Mind Stone. And then probably play Antiquities next turn already, so we get it going as opposed to Thought Monitor. Chandra's Triumph kills Ornithopter. And ooh, wow. Current the Great Creator. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated. That's a pretty big blowout here. Shuts down three of my artifacts. I can still play Thought Monitor at least. Not sure what Pithing Needle's gonna name. Could go for Mindstow once again in case Karn dies. So not Chandra Tribal, but just kind of Monoret control. Super friends. I Clyde of Flame. Can't get back a removal spell to kill Thought Monitor. Now, even though Karn shuts down my artifacts, they will still turn into 5-5s five with Antiquity War, so... Just playing Antiquities here could still be good enough. Unless Karn can get, like, a Platinum Angel or some other big card that uh, changes that. It's a pretty big decision on the minus two here. Gets Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, I mean, that's a uh, pretty good two. And Karn only shuts down opposing artifacts. So... Let's see here. Opponent plays Ratchet Bomb. Next turn they can put one counter on it, so it's probably still going to be too slow to kill my artifacts in time for the third chapter, at least. So there's that. So, very interesting battle that's going on here. Karn using the plus one on a zero mana artifact essentially kills it. Another cool interaction. Makes my thought monitor a bit more expensive. Alright, there is Psy. So probably want to go with Treasure Vault. Although Karn could kill that as well. So I could take an Ornithopter, so I can play Psy into Ornithopter. Sure. And then Soul Guide Lantern can exile Light of the Knights. Ratchet Bombs on one, so I won't be able to destroy my zero mana permanence. So this Antiquities might get there. I guess we're gonna see a Sweeper here instead. So they avoid dying to the Antiquities War. Yeah, Anger of the Gods. At least still leaves Psy. Unless Chandra wants to do something about it. So your opponent's only scheduled to take 15, but at least I will be able to take out those Planeswalkers. And then we can uh, keep digging with Thought Monitor. Pithing Needle, probably still a Mind Stone, I guess. Nope, on Psy. And a Chandra's Regulator. Okay. So your opponent's top decking, at least. And Rebuke a decent draw. So I don't have lethal, but I don't hate my spot. Place fear into thought monitor. 
and have Metallic Rebuke available. So definitely killing Karn and Chandra, and then the rest can go face. Well, this has been one of the more interesting games I've played recently. Lots of unique interactions on both sides. Not a matchup you encounter very often in Historic. Okay, just a lands. So our opponent can blow up Ratchet Bomb, killing my double Mind Stone here. That's okay. Also blows up Regulator. And now we've got a clock thanks to the Thopters from Psy. Could sacrifice Mindstone or Chromatic Sphere here. Still have Soul Guide Lantern available to maybe stop some graveyard synergies from our opponent. Wouldn't be able to use Psy to sacrifice Mox Amber here. That's okay. Probably still play an extra copy just for the Thopter. And then can still sacrifice Mindstone. Keeping up Aether Spellbomb to potentially bounce my own creature could also be valuable. Could have, for instance, bounced Thought Monitor just to replay it. Is that something I want to do? It does sound pretty neat, actually. Although I guess I would be shields down on Metallic Rebuke. Should have thought this through a little bit more. I mean, we still have a two-turn clock. I guess I should keep up Rebuke, although we wouldn't be able to counter six mana Chandra and our opponent can pay for an Anger of the Gods to resolve. So there's not much use in keeping up Rebuke, I feel. So I just want to present more threats so we can potentially present lethal right now. So Anger of the Gods would be bad. And 6 mana Chandra would be bad. 3 mana Chandra doesn't work since we can exile the Anger in the graveyard with Soul Guide Lantern. Alright, center opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn to Mindstone, hopefully turn 3 Antiquities. Turn 4, make a few Thopters with Psy, and then turn 5, win the game, if all goes according to plan. Soulscar Mage, so we on an aggressive red deck. Okay, play Sphere for now. Uh -huh, red green with a burning tree. So, I guess this is just red green kind of wizards with maybe a Tarkos command. Yeah, it's going to be kind of tough if they have an Atarkas command. It's going to represent a lot of damage. I did draw a land in the meantime, so I can play turn 3 Antiquities. I might have to play Psy first anyways, just to give me some blockers. But for now, I think Mindstone is still the play. That way I have the option of potentially going Psy into a 1-drop next turn. But yeah, opponent on the play with a good start. We could be dead before chapter 3. Lap runner with no haste. Still worried about an Atarkos command. Now that I drew Ornithopter, I'm even more tempted to play Psy into a couple artifacts first. So let's do that. Keep blue mana up if possible. I could keep up Aether Spellbomb. As opposed to playing a Lantern out. That sounds reasonable. So I can maybe bounce the creature in response to a pump spell. Right, opponent attacks with all. So we're gonna see an Atarkas command. Uh, how do I block? 
I guess Scion Burning Tree still works. And then I could put Thopdrum Pyromancer to kind of force them to cast it. But then bouncing Pyromancer with Spellbomb doesn't sound great. So I would instead maybe want to bounce like a Soulscar Mage. So I could put Ornithopter on Soulscar Mage, but then if they cast a different burn spell, that's maybe not so great for me. Could also put Psy on Pyromancer, I guess, instead of Burning Tree. And then the Atrakos Command's not enough to kill Psy. And then maybe Ornithopter on Soulscar Mage. And then I'll just bounce Soulscar Mage if they go for it. Which is the best creature to bounce on this board. So prowess happens. We'll bounce Soulscar Mage. Alright. We're down to four. Which is not great, but at least we're not dead. And I think I gotta play Antiquities here as opposed to playing out more artifacts and then hope to find a zero mana artifact we can play or another treasure vault because I need to get this wing condition in play otherwise we're just going to get burnt out all right mox amber is perfect and then exiling Atarkas commands makes the life runner worse as well all right, hopefully opponent doesn't have more burn spells. Need to survive two turns. Another Atarkas command would also be bad. Possible the Thopter should have chumped last turn. All right. Opponent attacks. So, block, block, block. Do I want to double block in case of command here. That way it at least dies. Then I would lose Ornithopter, two Thopter tokens, Psy lives, I go to one. And we should still have enough on the third chapter here. Yep, and there we go. We're at one. And find Ether Spellbomb or Thought Monitor. I don't imagine Spellbomb matters too much here. So we'd rather Thought Monitor maybe draw into Metallic Rebuke as a counter spell. So we'll start here. Alright, there we go. Safety of a counter spell. Feels nice. And then Lantern, Exile, Tharkos Command. And play Cold Steel Hearts, leaving up Metallic Rebuke. Okay, hopefully nothing can go wrong. If they play Mountain and have two burn spells, we could still die. Uh oh, stomping ground untapped. Burning tree, I think I gotta let that resolve. Because it could still have a different burn spell in hand. But I guess they have two cards in hand, we know it's Soul Scar Mage, so I don't think we can die here. With Rebuke in hand, so we should be fine. But we still couldn't counter the emissary in case their burn spell is one mana. And a wizard's lightning. No thanks. Alright, so where we failed against the uh, red-white burn deck, we drew the rebuke at a critical moment against red-green. And I'm afraid to tell our opponent if they don't have the mana to pay for this. And the third chapter is certainly looking like it's gonna be game. They can make a last-ditch attack. 
opponent opponent's speechless here. They can't believe it. The opponent could have tried to cast it after I attacked with all the 5-5s, five and maybe I wouldn't have left up Metallic Rebuke if I attacked with a Treasure Vault as well. But I would have made sure to keep 3 mana untapped. And yeah, it seems like our opponent has left the building, so I can do my outro speech while we wait. So yeah, overall, Mono Blue Antiquities War. Fun deck. I don't think it's necessarily a very competitive historic deck, since it does rely pretty heavily on eventually drawing the Antiquities War. Very fast aggro and combo decks can certainly kill us before we assemble everything, but uh, I think I'm still happy with its current configuration. Again, as I've said in the introduction, there's a lot of utility lands we could be playing, but uh, we still need our blue mana for the deck to function. I don't think we can play too many other colorless lands. Maybe one Inventor's Fair just for a couple extra life points could be okay. But uh, yeah, this is why we play the deck for these attack steps and ridiculous amounts of damage. Could also go for a more creature heavy approach with uh, Tempered Steel. And then you get to play Asper Sentinel with Tempered Steel and Steel Overseer. Those are pretty fun to play with as well. That's also a good home for Nettle Cyst potentially. But this is just a completely different take on the artifact deck. And getting to see Psy and Emery in action is also fun since those cards are very powerful but they just need to ride home. Alongside Mox Amber of course is where they shine. And uh, yeah, Mox Amber, both a zero mana artifact as well as a mana ramp artifact is exactly what this deck needed, and we're very good at casting Thought Monitor for one mana. Alright, so we got our attack in for 70 plus damage, always very satisfying. So yeah, Antique Affinity, if you've got the cards from back in the day, I recommend dusting them off and giving this deck a try with all the new updates but uh, maybe not necessarily the best deck for ranked play. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.